My guest today on Dolphin Tales is Michael Sakane of the Men's Golf Program. He's getting ready to head west on I-10 here and compete in the NCAA Men's Golf Championship Regional Round out in Tallahassee. And thank you for joining me as you uh, get ready to continue your season here as we roll uh, through the month of May. Thank you very much for having me here. Yeah, I'm excited to play in the regional. Uh, this will be... My first time in three years, I went to the regional as a team um, in the freshman year. But <clears throat> two of my teammates um, carried the team. So this is, I would say, this is actually my first time to go to regional um, by myself with, with my F4. Did you, have you talked to your teammate, Eduardo Correte? He was the last one to go as an individual. Have you gotten any advice or anything from him on how to handle it uh, by yourself out there? Be yourself was the advice he gave me. Probably not. <clears throat> Obviously, postseason regional is special and then uh, even more special than any other tournaments in, in our season. But the, um, he told me just trust yourself and then be yourself um, would help me to um execute the best shot do you remember a whole lot from that trip you guys made as a team years ago it was i think in iowa and then i still remember that a lot of memories uh, this was the actually first time for me to play to flip my right d glove and then hit hit lefty um, by, by the bunker, the, um, leap of the bunker. And then I was playing with the, the guy from Wake Forest. I still remember. I, I have a lot of memories there. Yeah. Still how did that, remember. how did that shot go hitting the opposite hand? I met up and down. Okay. So it was by the green, by the, um, green side bunker. And then the leap was very steep. And then I wasn't able to hold my righty club even if i like choke down a little bit grip grip down even if i if i grip that maybe a, an inch or two inches away from the actual club, i wouldn't be able to the bunk that flick the club down to on the ground not in the bunker instead of in, in a bunker outside the bunker and then chip it lefty made up and up <laughs> That's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty fun memory. experience. All right. Can we uh, take a step back here real quick? We'll get back into, to, you know, this season and what the, what the opportunity to play in the NCAAs is, is like for you. But, but last year when, when the pandemic hits and everybody's home and you're, I mean, you're back home in Japan, right. And, and you're and your teammates are scattered all over, all over the world. I mean, how, how much of a challenge was it for you? How did you kind of stay, you know, the course, the, the whole way, were you able to get out and play much golf? What was the experience like for you? I went back to Japan at the end of March. Um, this was a time the JU shut everything. And I was there in Japan for almost half a year until probably the beginning of September. And then thankfully I was able to play golf almost every day. Um, so comparing to any other countries, including like European countries, mm -hmm. they, they shut the border and then made like a everybody to stay home for probably two or three weeks in the beginning of the pandemic while in japan the actually playing golf was recommended since he was outside and then for some reason that the cases I, we had back then wasn't as bad as the amount of the cases wasn't as as bad as the uh what they have in europe or mm -hmm. in the united states as well so I was playing golf every day, <laughs> staying with my family. It was, to be fair, I, I didn't really struggle much with pandemic health, uh, thankfully. That's good. I mean, I know, you know, here in the U.S., it was kind of one of those deals, too, where, like, golf was something that kind of went throughout the time. And, 
you know, I talked to Sam Brimhall from the women's golf team uh, on a couple episodes ago, and she talked about how much time she spent out at the course over those those spring and summer months when there was not a whole lot else to do. And for uh, for you all, I mean, being in a situation um, to be able to continue to work on your craft despite things being very abnormal elsewhere, uh, that mm-hmm. that's a, a great opportunity. You feel like that helped you out because you were able to play as much as you did? I think so. It wasn't really planned it, but I believe so. Yeah, it helped me to be here. All right. So the fall happens. No, uh, no official tournaments. You guys play together and everything. You get into the spring. How did you approach the spring season? Where, where were you at your best when, when it came to playing this past season? So in the fall semester, I played in four different tournaments individually. Three of them weren't that good event but the um playing the tournament is always a good preparation for the next tournament and then playing in a tournament is the best way to improve you improve the game as well in my opinion so i playing these tournaments obviously help and it also the make um i mean help me to prepare for the, the spring season <laughs> As well as in the spring season, I had a good, great start. Um, the preparation probably I had in the fall semester um, is and was a big reason for me to start to play well, uh, to play well in the beginning. And then towards the end, same thing, I think, as I get to, as I got to, playing more tournaments and more tournaments and more tournaments I felt like the, it actually starts rolling and rolling and rolling once it starts I could have just been I could just keep being better and better and better towards the boss season so do you feel like you're playing your best golf right now in my career I think so okay based on my ranking as well I have the lowest ranking um, on the world amateur golf ranking in my life that's great. I mean, this is the time that you want to be playing at your best. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So you're, you're going to be out there with, with your coach, coach Jamie Salmon, who'll be with, with you out there. Right. And then, but mm-hmm. what, what, what's it going to be like without your teammates out there? Is it, will it feel different because you're used to having those guys around? Yeah, definitely. I would feel different. <laughs> I would have a lot more time with Jamie and then we would talk a lot more than, um, we have done before and other trips. Um, probably I would feel more also not awkward to stay and to stay at the hotel by myself instead of staying with my teammates. Um, but I'm excited still. I'm just excited to be. It is funny how, you know, golf is a very individual game, but Mm -hmm. the way the college game is played and the high school game here in the States as well, like it it is sort of team oriented. So there there is this aspect of you get to know your teammates, you play with your teammates, you're trying to help them out. And then now you find yourself in a situation where you're playing how a professional would play, right? You're going out here uh, competing Mm -hmm. as an individual do you think that this is a, a good test for you? I mean, you played in, in other events elsewhere where you're more in this type of a situation, but you, do you feel like you do anything differently or, or do you try and just treat everything the same? Differently in some aspects and then the same in some aspects. Um, for example, having, having a caddy, it's mm-hmm. not really caddy, but um, Coach Jamie would follow me every, um, and then would be with me for an entire time um, while playing. So I'm not really used to it. So that would be a different aspect uh, we I would experience. And then I'm not as I'm not really used to having a caddy. Um, mm-hmm. But the um, individual event, obviously, um, as we all grew up, um, golf is an individual sport. Uh, sport. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't change anything just because of the difference in the environment. 
but I'm definitely able to see the difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would feel differently by having the coach Jamie. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, you're kind of blending two worlds, if you will, here and two styles mm-hmm. of, of how you're playing. But uh, I mean, I imagine that when, when you get out there and when you pull the club and you address the ball, it's all going to feel feel very, mm-hmm. very similar. Uh, what I want to go to a little bit of, um, you know, something that happened this past year and just get your thoughts on it. And that was uh, Hideki Matsuyama winning the Masters Championship, first Japanese-born golfer to win a major. I mean, did you... I mean, were you dialed into that? I imagine. I mean, wh- how how did you feel watching watching that play out? Oh, I was so excited. Um, so I was watching obviously on live with my teammates. It was during the tournament, and then on the way back, on the way going to the tournament uh, in the van, we we were watching Masters, and then obviously I'm fond of Hideki Matsuyama, so as they know that. Um, they were making fun of Hideki and me that, oh, no, Hideki missed the shot. Oh, Hideki didn't hit the well. Oh, Hideki missed the putt or something like that to make me mad, you know? Yeah, yeah. They, 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 like, to make, they like to make me frustrated a little bit. <laughs> and then nobody was fond of Hideki anyway on the team. Um, <clears throat> so we were making fun of each other and then, then having fun to watch the Masters. Um, and then I was very happy when he when he held up the victory uh, on the last I wouldn't say it was the best finish for him and even in the interview as well he was saying that he was very nervous for the entire 18 holes and then he wouldn't be able to win if his performance was 99.9 percent he said to win the masters the player needs to execute a hundred percent so with that the interview and with his experience, including everything, I enjoyed it a lot to watch. Yeah, it was it was uh, a different, you know, finish. It wasn't this super hotly contested one. There were a couple of guys that were hanging around and maybe trying to give him uh, push him a little bit, but it was just it was cool to see somebody go out there and and execute on a golf course that I know isn't always yeah. the easiest to execute on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. That was, a, that was a fun experience, uh, getting a chance to watch that this past spring, seeing the Masters in the normal time frame again as well, yeah, as opposed to that, definitely, yeah. that unique fall Masters we had had last year. So who was everybody else rooting for? Or they were just giving you a hard time, but were they actually pulling for anybody else? Um, like was somebody probably. trying, hoping Will Zalatoris was going to come through on that on that Sunday? Uh, no, no, nobody said that. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, I, I, at least on my team, nobody was cheering, cheering up for him. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's a good player, though. Yeah. Uh, probably Jamie, um, but the coach, yeah. there, nobody really wants. Um, that the um, probably they were, they wanted to see the drama. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So you know. <clears throat> Yeah, they wanted to see the drama. They didn't, they didn't want Hideki to lead by two or three strokes. He, they wanted Hideki to lead by one stroke. Well, he, he, they wanted Hideki to tie with like the other players going into the last three holes or something like that. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, I guess yeah. we are all kind of a lot of times yeah, pulling for... Entertainment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> it would have been more fun. I agree with that point. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, hey, have you seen any of the preparations for the Olympics out there? Do you know anybody that will be competing for for Japan in the Olympics this summer, the rescheduled ones that were supposed to take place last summer? Um, I know. I know Nasa Hataoka very well. Um, she's, uh, she's on the LPGA. Uh, she's the best player from Japan. And then if they're going to have Olympics in Japan, the Nasa would be... In, it will be in the field. Well, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, I know that, uh, I know it's still kind of a weird will it or won't it type situation with it right now. But uh, I mean, I vaguely, vaguely remember being a kid when the Olympics were in uh, Atlanta here in the United States and like the buzz that surrounded that. Uh, and that wasn't, you know, it was close to here. Um, but it, it is something different when, when they, uh, you know, when your when your country is able to host a worldwide 
event quite like that. And, and maybe hopefully they'll be able to put it on and, and maybe you'll get a chance to go out there and, and see her perform, uh, you know, play some, that'd be, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get back to, to the national championship coming up. I mean, what, it, take me through your routine. What, what are you going to do leading into it? Uh, when it comes to practice round, what, what is everything leading up to when you hit, you know, you tee up that first hole, that first day, what, what's it going to look like for you? I finished finals last week, right? I just graduated from JU, Jacksonville University, and then the graduation Congrats. was on Saturday. Congrats. Thank you very much. <laughs> Once I had a graduation commencement, I still had a final project to submit by the following Sunday. It was, it was like two days ago. So I was I was working for a final project in the final exams, one of them is a humanity. It was a core course I was supposed to take in freshman year, but my in freshman year, my English was bottom of the bottom right english okay. skill was bottom to bottom so i was still struggling after spending time for in, like stem, spending time in the united states more than three years i was still struggling with humanity so during the last week i did almost nothing for golf i was stuck in the room for the entire week and my family came for the graduation i needed to give them a ride to the airport from the airport to the campus and from the campus to the airport i went to the Jacksonville, University, uh, Jacksonville International Airport three times on Sunday or something. <laughs> I did nothing for golf. My focus as a preparation on this uh, for this week is to play golf as much as possible. I'm just as much as possible. I'm just trying to let the, this frustration out. Now, I'm not I'm not saying that having my family in Jacksonville is frustrating. No, no obviously not. I was so happy with them. I'm so happy with having having them in Jacksonville, my was for, but they are um, playing as many golf as possible is my, would be my preparation for this week. And then. I did not anticipate yeah. you telling me that you literally haven't touched a golf club in a week. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. Oh, Saturday. I played a few holes with my okay. family there because they wanted to come to see uh, uh, the TPC Saugers. It's one yeah. for golf course. And then I played nine holes only. I shot nah, 41 or something. And when you don't play golf that often, the, I think you would feel that everything light. So my putter was very light and my driver was so light. I feel like I'm swinging my club in the air. I don't, I didn't even feel that ball. Then I made that, I made the decision on that, on that day. Okay. I'm going to play as many golf as possible next week. <laughs> All right. Well, it sounds like you've got your work cut out for you, uh, getting yep. out and, and hitting the chasing the little white ball as much as you possibly can, getting mm -hmm. ready, getting ready for the the NCAA championships. Uh, Michael, yes. I I, I want to thank you for for joining me. Congrats again on graduation. Congrats on qualifying as an individual for the regional round of the NCAA championships, and and best of luck to you out there. I hope to see you advancing and and continuing this journey. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it.